I'm Mary Rose, author of the Inquiring Minds interviews on California Catholic Daily, speaking with Father Joseph Ilo, pastor of Star of the Sea Parish in San Francisco, about his May 30th blog, Gratitude. Father Ilo's blogs can be found at fatherilo.blog.com. The first thing in your blog, you were talking about the Eucharist um, and the Feast of Corpus Christi and the fact that the Eucharist or the word Eucharist means Thanksgiving in Greek. My first question is actually just why I've heard that before, but why is that? Why is it the, the exact same word? Why is the Eucharist called the Eucharist? Uh, well, I'm not a Greek scholar or a biblical scholar, but uh, it comes from two words, right? Um, Eu means good, like eu euthanasia, good death. Eu chari charisma um, is... Um, Anyway, it means Thanksgiving. So um, why is that? Because I think the early Christians had to come up with a word that best described that prayer. And prayer is essentially Thanksgiving. Praise and Thanksgiving is the fundamental purpose of prayer. So it was with the Passover and all the blessings of the Jewish dispensation. And so the continuation of that in the Christian covenant would be described in the Greek word eukodestain, to give thanks. What are we doing today? Well, we're praying for what we need. We're receiving the sacraments, but it, fundamentally we're giving thanks to God. We're praising him for his goodness. So we should never forget that we are fundamentally a people of praise and thanksgiving. Of all the other good stuff that Christians and the church does, the most essential act we do is to render thanks to God, which is his due. Even if no one else is doing it, we will do that. So then you said the, or the prayer in the, um, one of the Psalms for the traditional mass for that day is, what uh, now I can't remember exactly, but along the lines of what can I, uh, how can I repay God basically for everything that He has given me? And the answer is just gratitude. Is the Mass, it seems like to say the Mass is just, just a big thank you seems to be, <laughs> say, it seems to me the Mass is more than purely thank you. I don't know, it seems like the Mass as a prayer of gratitude is that's just that's part of it, not all of it. But maybe I'm misunderstanding both what you're saying and misunderstanding the mass. I don't know. Maybe you're misunderstanding what gratitude is because we think of gratitude. Gratitude is so glibly given in our culture. You, you go to uh, Kmart there's somebody that welcomes you at the door and says, thank you for coming. Uh, so superficial. So this is a deeper form of gratitude, which is really a stewardship, recognizing that we are nothing and he is everything and that all we have is his. So it's not just saying thank you, but it's an acknowledgement of the divinity of God of the source from whom all blessings flow. So in that sense, it's also praise. Praise and thanksgiving are the same act, really, especially in the Jewish understanding of blessing. Every Jewish blessing was essentially a, an act of gratitude to the God who brought the Israelites out of Egypt and provided for them day after day. So if we think of the Mass, maybe to think of it not in terms of just a big thank you, like a Kmart thank you, but an act of um, the deepest praise of one who knows that he is nothing without God. God, Jesus, as Mother Teresa would often say, is Jesus is my all in all, only all for Jesus. She had that painted on the Home for the Dying Destitutes in Calcutta. In 97, I was there for three weeks and I would go in 
most mornings to the home for the dying destitutes, Kaligat. Say a prayer before the statue of Our Lady, and then look up and see those words that she had painted, only all for Jesus. It's all, it's all him. And so the Mass is acknowledging, it's professing that, that God is my all in all. My other question that I'm kind of curious about is, did you have your Eucharistic procession? You ran into some difficulties there on the sidewalk. Yeah, if you read the blog, it was Corpus Christi Thursday, which is not celebrated in most of the world, except on Sunday. Corpus Christi is celebrated on Sunday, most dioceses. We do it both because in the parish, we have both calendars. We follow the older and the newer calendars. So it was Thursday and we had, um, I had just celebrated our uh, Corpus Christi mass at 7 a.m., but we were getting ready for the big sung mass and procession at 6 p.m. So the sacristan said, we can't do the Corpus Christi procession this year because there's too much poop on the sidewalk. We'll have to take another route or, or cancel it. So I went out to take a look and there was a lot of poop. I mean, maybe four or five piles in the block that we were going to traverse. So as you can read in the blog, I got very angry. I wasn't very thankful. The opposite of gratitude probably is resentment. And I yelled at a homeless person who probably did it, but denied it. And then I, there was a poor Filipino man in an old beat up pickup truck cleaning up things that I'm sure gets paid minimum wage by the city or something. And so he went over and cleaned it up. And he was, I kind of yelled at him too. Actually, I said, why are you wearing that stupid mask? <laughs> and You'd be surprised at how many people in my neighborhood still wear masks uh, and wear gloves. Because I don't know why. Because the government told them to do it. And that makes me mad, too. It's hard not to be angry. <laughs> I have an anger problem. But um, there's so much that's dysfunctional or irrational in our culture. And the temptation is to get mad at people instead of seeing God's grace at work. Well, that's, so that's actually, what asked. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, well, that's then at the end, when you're talking about we should practice gratitude and you talked about getting angry. And so then at the end, though, you said, you know, thank the Lord for, and you listed a bunch of things to be grateful for. But one of the things, you know, so you're grateful for the man who cleaned it up, but you also said, thank you for the man who presumably made the mess on your sidewalk. <laughs> I was wondering, was that sincere gratitude or how should we, you know, as St. Paul, you said, as St. Paul says, in all things, give thanks. But how how do you give thanks in a circumstance like that? Or are you supposed to give thanks for other things that you are truly grateful for? Well, okay, in all circumstances, give thanks, meaning when you don't like it, when it seems like it's negative or is negative by certain metrics. So Mother Teresa encountered a lot of darkness. That was her, she was a professional darkness um, seeker. She went, Jesus said, go into the dark holes of the poor and, and bring my light to them because they don't know me, they don't love me because they don't know me. And so she had to learn how to see goodness and badness, light and darkness. So yes, there's, this structural sin of the government capitalizing on psychotically imbalanced people in San Francisco. That is, you invite anybody to come into the city that has uh, a psychological imbalance that should be getting care, and you put them on the street, and you get votes through these people. Like, look what we're doing for the, for the poor people in our city. Aren't we great? And it's it's a racket. It's a it's a political ploy. But the victims are these imbalanced people. They they every day I'm I'm in my office of Bakiri Boulevard and I hear screams, people shouting, talking to themselves, just throwing out f bombs at the top of their lungs. 
because they're not getting help from the city. They're being used as political pawns. And I'm sure a lot of people in the government would try to correct me on that. And, but anyway, that's what I see on the ground. And what I see on the ground is this broken, psychotic man. And Mother Teresa said, do you see Jesus in that man? Are you thankful for what is? Anything that is, is good. Here's a human being. So even though I don't feel it, doesn't mean I shouldn't give thanks for it. You get cancer, you're tempted to resent it or be depressed or sad. And if you can overcome that initial reaction and be thankful for it, your life gets much better. You're already one foot in heaven. So we learn how to give thanks. And that's what the Mass is. It's essentially a profession of thanksgiving for all that is. The joys and the sorrows, the light and the darkness. So my Mother Teresa had to start the day with a holy hour before the Blessed Sacrament, 5 to 6 a.m. Mass at 6. And then a second holy hour, a time before the Blessed Sacrament, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Because you prepare yourself to give thanks for all the darkness in Calcutta at the beginning of the day. And then you give thanks after a day of walking through the darkness and the, and the squalor of the slums. So we have to find our Calcutta wherever we live. And certainly my Calcutta is just outside my door with those poor men and some women. Some of them, you know, they relieve themselves right in my church. <laughs> there was, uh, you have to be, you have to have humor about it too. One of our Knights of Columbus is a, is a big, tough guy and kind of a gentle giant in many ways, but this homeless guy comes up. I mean, he's not even really homeless. He, he could have a home if he wanted to. It's just that he doesn't want to live at home. <laughs> Any of these men, believe me, I, I know them. I've, I've talked to them. They, they just, it's much night, it's much more exciting to live on the street where the government provides, you know, drugs, food, shelter if they want it. They don't have to sleep on the street. There's so many shelters available. But anyway, he came up and he, he said, I need a bathroom. And we said, um, it's out of order. So he just pooped on the, Put a pulled his pants down and put right in, in, in the vestibule of the church when nobody was looking, kind of. And then this guy from the Knights of Columbus comes back and he goes, What happened here? And by then the guy was walking down the street. So he ran back and he got him. He made him clean it up. He said, You made this mess. You're going to clean up this mess. And that's an act of charity, really. That you are a human being. You're not an animal. You can clean up your mess. So that that's our, we have to learn how to you know, give thanks and work with the situation, not just curse the darkness, but Mother Teresa would do this, would do that. She would say, to the extent that you can take responsibility for your life. Don't live like an animal. If we're gonna, you know, we'll, we'll help you as much as we can to live like a human being. Well, I guess most of us are not dealing with those same types of situations, but are there any quick tips um, for how to cultivate gratitude on a, on a daily basis? Sure. Well, I mean, everybody has a Calcutta. So it's not maybe homeless people, vagrants pooping on your doorstep, but or screaming obscenities when you're trying to write your homilies <laughs> out the window. So, but everybody has you know, challenges at work or in the home, physical infirmities, mental challenges, you know, emotional darkness. So with all those things, when we're tempted to say there's nothing good in this, I'm just angry or I'm, I'm sad, but to, to see the goodness that is in every situation, to, to see God's providence, he is omniprovident. There's, he's never not providing for us in every situation. So to see that, even if you don't see it, make an act of thanksgiving. 
thank you, Lord, for the good times and the bad times, the joys and the sorrows. 